this is basically this unit is in series with the stock spark plug wire. It's kind of a crazy coil setup, as you can see. It's wrapped around a nail here. Um, this is, I think, uh, 12 gauge of house electrical wire with the insulation stripped off. And uh, I think this is 14 gauge insulated multi strand. So we have several different wraps in here. And I'm actually going to take it apart for you so that you can see how he wrapped it. This is how, this is his particular, he did this. I watched him, he wrapped another one just like it, and I watched him do it. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 wraps of this gray wire. See, so he's wrapped it around itself, so the tail comes down, and he just wraps it around the copper wire, this wire, and the nail. Okay? So that's how this coil of wire works. Okay? Then you have the copper wire wrapped around this nail. I'm going to pull the nail out. So basically you have two coils. You have this red wire wrapped around the coils of the copper wire. So the red wire he wrapped around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. What this coil is supposed to do, these multiple wrappings, they reduce the stock ignition coil voltage coming out of the spark plug wire and boost the current. So his claim is that what I'm unwrapping here boosts the current and reduces the voltage. He says that because the water entering the chamber is under a slight vacuum that it reaches a point of volatility and that you hit it with this lower voltage, higher amperage spark and it will ignite the water. That's his claim. So this is the coil he starts out with and there's one, two, three, four, five, six wraps of this copper coil. And then this red wire was wrapped around, as I counted for you earlier, around this. Then the nail is set through, and then this 12 wire wrap around the bottom of it. So, this is the water car technology. This coil setup that I've just disassembled for you is what he claims can get a small engine to run on nothing but water being introduced into uh, a dry carburetor. This is the motor that will be wiring through this coil. Here are the leads to that motor. The motor is nothing unusual or unique. It's a heater blower motor, DC. Nothing special in there. Now what Nathan is saying is that by running DC current through this motor and then through the side of the coil it creates a uh, resonation, a resonating magnetic field within this coil assembly. Now the output of this coil assembly goes directly to the spark plug. So it's creating a lesser voltage, higher amperage resonance type spark within the combustion chamber to ignite the water being drawn in through the carburetor. We're going to introduce the water into the carburetor directly through here. This is the, the opening. This is actually the breather case right here. And that's down there is the throat of the carburetor. And that's where we will be injecting the water, the spring water, out of the small container uh, into, the, into the carburetor to be combusted. So I can record it. I didn't get it. And here we've taken the cover off so you can see this is the co the stock ignition system. So we had to cover took the cover off so you can see it. Nothing special here, just your coil and everything else that comes stock with these. And then of course is the modified uh amperage booster, is what I guess you could refer it to.
Okay, so here's the spark plug that you just saw being demonstrated. And I personally am going to put that plug into the engine block. I've inspected it. Nothing special about this spark plug. There's nothing unusual. It's a uh, Champion. It's a QC 12YC, so it's nothing special. It's a regular old, regular old spark plug. I'm going to put a hand on that engine real quick, and I'm just going to... And then I tighten it down. And you've seen the setup. You just connect the output of it, the custom coil setup right to the end of the spark plug. And ground the whole system. That We drained all the fluids out. We've left the drain plug out so there, no one can say there's any combustible gases in the crankcase. And the vent line we're going to leave disconnected. This is the crankcase vent line. I've showed it a couple of times already. Uh, we are going to leave that disconnected from the carburetor venturi so uh, there can be no connection between the crankcase ventilation and the intake of the engine. Oldsmobile, headed back to Vermont, and uh, let's see, I've been on the road now for 19 hours, it's, uh, well, so far, I've driven 916 miles, and that's just, uh, that's just one way, long trip to, uh, to verify this claim, and look at me, I'm exhausted, uh, I've gotten like maybe one hour of sleep this whole weekend, uh, but it was worth making the trip down there. I got the answers that I needed. I got the answers that you needed, and I would once again want to take this opportunity to thank everybody uh, who donated their hard-earned money so that I could make this trip and verify the Nathrin uh, water fuel claim, and uh, I believe that I delivered what was asked, mission accomplished, went down there, we got the verification or the information that's needed, and uh, in this video you'll see the, the uh, conclusions of my observations, and I will present the data as I collected it uh, with Nathan's 100% blessing and permission. So, once again, thank you, everybody, and uh, hey, I'm just about home, so uh, I'm going to get some sleep, and then uh, I'm going to take all of the uh, pictures and video and various other data and uh, compile it all together for you guys and make a comprehensive video uh, to share with the world. This report is meant to be an evaluation of the science and technical aspects of a self-sustaining, 
water fuel claim and is in no way to be taken as a personal judgment. I found Nathan to be polite and hospitable, even though he was absolutely and completely unable to verify any of the claims he has made publicly concerning his 1978 El Camino or his Briggs & Stratton engine. That being said, this report does shed some light on an existing and profound problem in the area of alternative energy technology. This area of research is plagued with false and unproven claims. Overenthusiastic and hopeful believers want to use these false and unproven claims to support their passionate belief in green energy solutions. This causes a great amount of confusion within our community and opens up a soft target area for negative and angry skeptics to attack, and with vehemence. Unfortunately, this often results in many of us who make solid and proven claims subject to the same attacks by association. It is assumed that all of us are of the same spirit as those who make unproven claims. This is not fair, but it is the result of deduction and association coupled with human behavior. I want to discourage those who seek personal recognition and fame to refrain from doing so using statements and claims they cannot or are unable to prove. This researcher understands the desire to be acknowledged and respected, but strongly admonishes those who do it using unsubstantiated claims. Many of these claims are being made by people with honorable goals and intentions, but it needs to be understood that any fortress built on the foundation of sand will eventually lose its footing and fall back into the ground from which it came. To maintain and protect the integrity of our industry, we all need to check one another for truth and integrity. We need to regulate ourselves and immediately investigate incredible claims that arise from our own ranks to ensure that any further damage from false claims can be avoided. Those considering making false claims knowingly need to pause and consider the immense damage being done to true and honest researchers such as myself. I and others like me tend to take the residual heat remaining as the result of outrageous claims that have no validation whatsoever. So keep your research honest and realistic, and be prepared to provide proof and validation of your claims at any time when requested. If you are unable or unwilling to provide proof of your claims, consider refraining from publicly making those claims, even if they are true. A claim that cannot be validated, proven, or observed by a third party might as well be considered false until that verification can actually be performed.